Hi everyone, I'm Brett Drummond. I'm an MS researcher, science communicator, and co-founder of MS Translate. I'm here once again to give you another video summary of a recently published MS research paper. So let's get into it. Okay, so the research that we're going to be talking about today uh, has received a little bit of coverage online already. And the headlines that have been used have been linking childhood trauma to multiple sclerosis. So obviously this is an interesting topic and I thought it was one that we should cover and do a research video of. So this is the specific uh, paper in question. So early life trauma triggers interferon beta resistance and neurodegeneration in a multiple sclerosis model via downregulated beta-1 adrenergic signaling. Now obviously that's quite complicated and we're not going to be getting into all of that in this video. We're just going to unpack some of the key findings of this research study and present it to you in a way that's simple and easy to understand. <clears throat> so this is research that, uh, as I said, was published recently. It's out of the University of Illinois from the United States and it was published in Nature Communications. And this paper is actually open access, so we'll put the link in the description below the video and you can go and access the entire publication at the moment. So if we go through what the study has shown, the first important thing to note is that this was a study done in an animal model of multiple sclerosis. In particular, this was a mouse model known as EAE, or Experimental Autoimmune Encephalomyelitis. So essentially what they did for the main part of the study was that they took mice and split them into two groups. Some of those mice experienced uh, early life trauma, whereas the other group didn't. Now in terms of the early life trauma, what they did was really there were two different kinds. There was physical trauma and there was also stress or emotional trauma, essentially by separating these newborn, mi these newborn mice uh, from their mothers. <clears throat> So they looked at in terms of the, the mice that had undergone trauma and the mice that didn't undergo trauma and looked at whether there was any differences in the disease outcomes that were experienced in this animal model. And so what you can see here is that the mice that did experience this early life trauma experienced both earlier disease onset, indicating that perhaps this trauma had increased their susceptibility to developing the disease, and as well as that, they also experienced worse disease severity. So after the disease developed in the two groups, the mice that had experienced this early life trauma had a worse progression. So indicating that not only did it impact on severity, uh, sorry, not only did it impact on susceptibility, but it also impacted on severity. So then they then went on to investigate this further and see whether or not they could identify some reasons that may have led to these results. Now again, there was lots and lots of different uh, analyses that they did in that, this study, and I'm not going to talk about all of them in this video. But here are some of the key ones that they found. So interestingly, what they saw is that in the mice that had um, undergone early life trauma, they found that there were differences in the immune system in these mice. They saw that they had higher numbers of T-cells, and that these T-cells behaved slightly differently. There was greater inflammation in the central nervous system, and things like that, indicating that maybe this is why they were seeing those disease characteristics in the early life trauma mice. <clears throat> More so than that, what they did was in the mice, uh, after they developed disease, they tried to treat it with interferon beta, a, a common MS therapy. And in the mice that hadn't undergone treatment, they found that this therapy was quite effective. Uh, it was able to treat the disease the mice got better However, in the mice that had experienced early life trauma, they found that they were completely resistant to this treatment with interferon beta. Furthermore, what they saw was, we won't go into the specifics of the actual pathway that they identified, but they found a pathway in these mice that seemed to be important um, in terms of how this early life trauma may be uh, interacting with the disease. And importantly, they found a way that they could modify this pathway in a potential therapeutic approach. So I guess the question that we have with all of these types of studies is how do we know how results that we get in an animal, animal model of multiple sclerosis in this mouse model EAE are going to translate across to human studies? And the short answer is that we don't, but 
This isn't the first study that's looked into how early life trauma or childhood trauma may impact on multiple sclerosis. There have been a couple of other studies done a number of years ago now that have looked into this. They have found that early life trauma, childhood trauma, does seem to increase susceptibility uh, in one population where they did this work. And there was another study published in 2012 that also found that childhood trauma does seem to lead to an increased relapse rate, again, in, a, in another study. So there is some growing evidence to suggest that this may be implicated both in terms of susceptibility to developing multiple sclerosis, but also in terms of the outcomes uh, of the multiple sclerosis once um, it is diagnosed or once it, it occurs after disease onset. But in terms of this specific study, I think what we can take away is that it's given us some interesting areas to explore further. And as the authors suggest, what would be interesting to do now is look in terms of people living with multiple sclerosis who may have undergone childhood trauma and see whether these results are mirrored, see whether or not they can identify these same pathways and they see these same changes in the immune system as being present but also assess whether or not the certain therapeutic approaches that they've seen that work in these mice may be a novel thera therapeutic approach for people living with multiple sclerosis who have undergone this childhood trauma or have had this childhood trauma. So it's an interesting study. There are still a lot more questions that we need to ask, but it's provided some new interesting avenues to explore. So as always, as I said, uh, that. This is, was quite a large study. There were lots of different parts and we haven't covered all of them in this video. If you do have questions and you do want to know more information, please do just comment below the video and I'll make sure that I respond to every question that's asked. And if you've enjoyed this video and want to stay up to date with all of our content, please do subscribe if you're watching this via YouTube or if you're on our Facebook page, please do like and follow. Thanks everyone. I hope you found this informative and I'll be back with another video in the near future. Bye.